Think about this for a second. Right now, you're on a planet spinning at about a thousand miles per hour. That planet is orbiting a star at 67,000 miles per hour. And that star is dragging all of us through the galaxy at roughly 514,000 miles per hour. We feel perfectly still, but we're all passengers on a cosmic carousel of unbelievable speed. We're taught that our home, the Milky Way, is an impossibly vast island of stars. And it is. But what if I told you that in the grand scheme of things, our entire galaxy is like a single drop of water in an ocean? To really wrap our heads around the true scale of the universe, we have to start small. And then just keep zooming out. Let's start with something we can almost picture. Our solar system. We know it's big. It took the Voyager 1 spacecraft decades just to get near the edge. But to really understand the scales we're about to talk about, we need to shrink everything way, way down. Imagine the sun is shrunk to the size of a single grain of sand. On this scale, Earth would be a microscopic speck of dust, completely invisible, orbiting that grain. The orbit of Jupiter, the biggest planet in our system, would be about the size of a coin. The entire solar system, all the way out to Neptune, would fit neatly in the palm of your hand. Let that sink in. All the planets, every asteroid, every place we've ever sent a probe, it's all right there in your hand. Feels manageable, doesn't it? Almost tiny. But we've only taken the first step. Now, with that hand-sized solar system in your mind, what happens when we zoom out and try to find it in the sprawling city of stars we call the Milky Way? The Milky Way is our home. It's a gorgeous, barred, spiral galaxy, a spinning pinwheel of gas, dust, and somewhere between 100 and 400 billion stars. From where we are, we can't see its full shape. We're like someone standing in a huge forest, trying to imagine what the whole thing looks like from above. We're buried deep inside one of its spiral arms, about 27,000 light years from the center. For centuries, we had no idea how big it truly was. But thanks to modern telescopes, we've pieced together the puzzle. Our galaxy's main disk is at least 100,000 light years across. A light year is the distance light travels in one year, which is nearly six trillion miles. So to get from one side of our galaxy to the other, you'd have to travel at the speed of light for 100,000 years. Inside this colossal structure are hundreds of billions of stars. That number is so big, it's almost meaningless. You've probably heard the analogy that there are more stars in the Milky Way than grains of sand on all of Earth's beaches. But even that doesn't quite capture the scale. Because the craziest thing about our galaxy isn't the number of stars. It's the sheer emptiness between them. To really feel the size of the Milky Way, we need a bigger analogy. So let's toss out the grain of sand model and start over. Imagine we shrink the entire Milky Way galaxy, all 100,000 plus light years of it, down to the size of the United States. It stretches from California to New York, about 2,800 miles across. You can picture that, right? A map of a country. So, on this continent-sized galaxy map, where is our solar system? Where's that little model that once fit in your hand? On this new scale, our entire solar system, out to Neptune, is about the size of a fingerprint ridge. A tiny, barely visible swirl on the tip of your finger. And the sun? Our magnificent star? It would be smaller than a single one of your red blood cells. Utterly invisible. And Earth would be a speck of dust a few millimeters away from it. Think about that. If our galaxy were the size of a country, everything humanity has ever done would have happened on a stage so small it wouldn't even show up on the map. This is the reality of our galaxy. It's a universe of emptiness. The space between the stars is almost impossible to imagine. On this same scale, the nearest star to us, Proxima Centauri, would be another invisible red blood cell about four miles away. The space between is just nothing. A vast, dark, silent void. 
We live in a galaxy defined more by its emptiness than its fullness. And yet, this entire continent of stars, this unimaginable expanse, is just a tiny speck in something infinitely grander. For a long time, we thought the Milky Way was it, the entire universe. Then, in the 1920s, Edwin Hubble discovered that the fuzzy little patches of light in our telescopes weren't just gas clouds. They were other galaxies, millions of light years away. And with that, our entire understanding of the cosmos was shattered. The Milky Way isn't alone. It's part of a small gathering of about 50 galaxies we call the Local Group. Our biggest neighbor, the Andromeda Galaxy, is about 2.5 million light-years away and is even bigger than we are. On a very clear, dark night, you can just barely see it with your own eyes. A faint, ghostly smudge that represents the light of a trillion stars. But the Local Group is just a quiet suburb. When we zoom out even more, we find that galaxies aren't just scattered randomly. They're organized into immense structures, forming a cosmic web. Galaxies clump together in massive clusters, which are linked by great filaments of gas and dark matter stretching for hundreds of millions of light years. Between these filaments lie colossal empty regions called voids, where there's almost nothing at all. Our local group is just one tiny piece of a much larger structure called the Virgo Supercluster. And even that is just one arm of an even more gigantic cosmic structure, the Laniakia Supercluster, which spans over 520 million light years and contains over 100,000 galaxies. Our Milky Way is just one of those hundred thousand. And there are galaxies out there that make ours look tiny. Take IC 1101, one of the largest known galaxies. It's so big, with a stellar disk up to 550,000 light years across and a diffuse halo that may stretch for a couple million light years, that it makes our galaxy look like a dwarf. If you put IC 1101 where the Milky Way is, it would swallow our neighbor Andromeda whole. Yet, even this monster is just another point of light in the cosmic web. Time for our final jump. We're zooming out past Laniakea, past countless other superclusters, past the great walls and voids, until we can see the biggest thing there is, the observable universe. This is the bubble of space that contains everything whose light has had time to reach us since the Big Bang 13.8 billion years ago. Because space itself has been expanding, the actual diameter of this bubble is now about 93 billion light years. Let that number hit you. 93 billion light years. Our galaxy is 100,000 light years across. The math is simple, but the result is staggering. The observable universe is about 930,000 times wider than our entire galaxy. Inside this colossal volume, Astronomers estimate there are around two trillion galaxies. Two trillion. Each one an island of billions, or even hundreds of billions, of stars. For every single star in our own Milky Way, there are roughly ten entire galaxies out there. And remember that grains of sand analogy? It's often said that there are more stars in the universe than grains of sand on all of Earth's beaches. That's a wild understatement. There are likely more stars in the observable universe than there are grains of sand on the entire planet Earth, including all the deserts. The sheer scale is an assault on the imagination. But we can use our analogy one last time to really feel it. Let's go back to our model where the Milky Way is the size of the United States. We already established that our entire solar system is just a speck on your fingertip in that model. So, how big is the observable universe on this same scale? If our galaxy is the size of the United States, then the observable universe is about the size of our real-life solar system. Think about that. You're holding a map of the United States. That map is our galaxy. On that same scale, the edge of the observable universe would be out past the orbit of Pluto. That is the real difference. Our galaxy, so vast it takes light a hundred thousand years to cross it, is just a piece of paper. 
The observable universe is the entire solar system built around it. Every star and every nebula you've ever seen in a picture, except for a few of our closest galactic neighbors, exists on that paper-thin map. The other two trillion galaxies are scattered throughout that solar system-sized sphere. It's an amount of space so vast and so empty that it defies all earthly logic. And remember, that's just the observable universe. We have no idea what's beyond the edge. It could be more of the same, stretching on forever. It could be infinite. So what does all this mean? When we look up at the night sky, we see a beautiful tapestry of stars. But we now know we're just looking at a tiny corner of our own cosmic city. Beyond it lies a continent of stars we call the Milky Way. And beyond that continent lies a world of two trillion other galaxies. These numbers can make you feel impossibly small. And physically, we are. But here's another way to see it. The human mind, using science and reason, has managed to reach out and actually comprehend this scale. We have measured the unmeasurable and mapped the unmappable. From our tiny home on a speck of dust, orbiting an invisible star, inside a galaxy that is just one drop in a cosmic ocean, we have managed to look out and see the whole thing. And in that, there is a sense of wonder, a sense of awe, and a profound connection to this grand, silent, beautiful cosmos. The universe isn't just bigger than you think, it's bigger than you can think, and we're just getting started.